Hi, this is John Martin, president of Offshore Robotics. I'd like to share with you a video here of assisted to perform robotic riser make and break. This system was developed to perform tasks that are currently done with people. And the reason or the need for this was that uh, the people are in harm's way performing tasks underneath loads and working with very heavy objects as well as torque wrenches that you know, can, can become jammed and become a dangerous object uh, to the people involved. So this is the reason for their necessity actually to automate this process. Uh, the system has two robots on the port and starboard side of the system. Attached to those robots are two tools. We call them multi-tools. They have cameras embedded inside of the tools and they have sockets to manipulate devices as well as the bolts and to uh, run up and to loosen the bolts. So right here you'll see the cameras taking pictures of the riser position. That's important because the, the riser will move during the riser makeup process. After the hole cover is installed by the port robot, the system then will grab two stabbing guides. The stabbing guides are used as a help from the driller to position the upper riser onto the lower riser. The stabbing guides are inserted approximately five rotations. Uh, after the stabbing guides are installed, then the cameras go to work, or the robots go to work with their cameras to locate the six bolts that will be installed into the riser flange at a later time. Once the upper riser is in position by the driller and ready for uh, um, mating up to the lower riser, the port robot will remove the hole cover, uh, giving access for the upper riser uh, to be installed. And if you notice, a lot of the robot moves are made such the robots can work uh, while there's a load above them. Um, so we don't have to uh, pause operations on top of the spider. Um, they can still do tasks as the uh, drillers are manipulating and, and moving the riser sections into place. Uh, first operation is to remove the stabbing guides so we can then install the bolts. And if you remember, the bolts were already located with the camera system, so the orientation is known uh, for the uh, six bolts that will be installed. Um, so the servo motors that rotate the multi-tool socket, they are already matched uh, and uh, synced up with that bolt, bolt hex. Um, so the tool will simply go down over the top of the bolt, actuate a fork underneath the bolt head, uh, and then be able to lift that bolt out of the bolt bin and put it into the riser flange. As the uh, last bolts are being in inserted here, you can see a little bit of the multi-tools compliance, uh, this thread compensation compliance. It's used to match up the robot motion uh, with the thread engagement as we're, as we're tightening and loosening the bolts. We also use this for uh, fault detection. So if for some reason the bolt head did not go into the hole, it will actuate that switch and then we'll be able to do a series of moves uh, to be able to get the proper alignment of the bolt with the hole. Once all the bolts are installed, we'll change to our high torque tool. Uh, the torque tool is a hydraulically operated tool. Uh, we can get up to 36,000 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, typical torque on a riser flange like this uh, would be 18,000 foot-pounds. So once both robots are in position and ready to torque, they will start that operation. 
The system is set up so that both robots will be torquing or must torque at the same time. Uh, that's important for proper torquing of the riser flange so that we know we're get, getting equal torque on each side of this riser as we perform the torque. The robots themselves uh, don't really know where the hex of the bolt is uh, with this torque tool because it is hydraulically rotated. So what it does is use a feature on the robots called soft float. And soft float uh, pretty much allows the robot itself, the whole six axis arm robot to be compliant. And so as the uh, robot is rotating its socket above the bolt head, it is trying to kind of put a force downwards to engage over to the bolt head. And then once those the socket matches the bolt head, it does slip over the top of it, as you can see there. And then it will soft float into the reaction arm and then apply the high torque. As this last bolt here is being torqued, you can uh, talk a little bit about the components of the torque wrench itself. We have an intensifier uh, to intensify our 3,000 PSI input pressure, hydraulic pressure, to around 10,000 PSI output hydraulic pressure. We're also detecting the torque of the bolt based upon the pressure in the wrench. Uh, so we have a sensor that has given us the actual uh, hydraulic pressure inside the cylinder of the torque wrench. And we're monitoring that, so as it intensifies, the pressure slowly increases, and at a set pressure, we know the desired torque so that we can stop that operation. And we do a double confirmation uh, that we're at torque. All the torque values of the, of the riser uh, makes process is recorded and can be kept and reviewed at a later time. So once the uh, bolts are torqued, the riser make process is completed. The driller is free to take the load off of the spider and open the spider jaws. Um, as this is happening, the robots will change to their multi-tool for the next operation. So now we'll show you the riser brake process. Uh, first step that happens here is the driller lowers the riser into the spider jaws and closes the spider jaws and then we'll release the weight of the riser on top of the spider jaws. So now the robots will take pictures of the position of the riser bolts for the riser brake process. This is important because once the uh, riser is manipulated into the spider jaws, it can be it can move maybe about a half an inch and rotate a couple degrees. So we need to know where the bolt positions are uh, in order to position the torque tool and the multi-tool over the top of them and to engage the sockets into that bolt. So the tools are now changed to the torque tools. And this torque tool design can simply be rotated 180 degrees to go from torque to untorque so there is no changeover at all on the tool. A reaction arm you notice is now using the adjacent bolt on the opposite side so we don't have to move the uh, reaction arm at all. You see there the fault response uh, software kicked in where the torque tool did not engage over the bolt and what it does is it uh, lifts up, it cycles the wrench, and then it will try again rotating the wrench using soft float to uh, engage over the top of the bolt. The system uses the pressure sensor uh, to detect when the bolt is loose. So we know the pressure will intensify to a certain PSI as there is a, a quite a bit of torque to, to loosen the bolt, and that will diminish as the bolt is easily rotated 
Uh, so the software detects that. It's not using a, a cycle count or anything like that. It's actually looking at the pressure inside the torque wrench to detor determine when that uh, bolt is freely spinning. So changing from one tool to another, the system uses a quick change device. It's an ATI quick change device that uh, is able to carry electrical connections for our servo motor, for our sensors, power, and it also carries the hydraulic fluid and pneumatics that we use for actuating our, our bolt retainment fork and for the tool changer itself. So now that the bolts have been loosened by the torque tool, we will go and take a picture of them to find, again, the position of the bolt, just in case it moved during the untorquing process, and the rotation of the bolt. The rotation is important so that we can match the socket up with the hex of the bolt uh, to engage it over the top. As you can see, the robots can run unparalleled. They don't really have to be synchronized during their individual tasks of, of unthreading and moving the bolt. They can work uh, pretty much independently doing this. The only time they really sync up is during tasks that are necessary, necessary to sync. That's during the torquing process or if they are untorquing a bolt. We want those robots to move 180 degrees from each other. Well, thank you for uh, watching the video with me, and uh, if you would like to get more information about the system or anything we're doing here at Offshore Robotics, please feel free to contact us at info at offshorerobotics.com.